new Switch has 16 100 gigabit Ethernet ports. There are four 25 gigabit Ethernet ports. Behind them is a massive Marvell Switch chip for management. There's an Annapurna Labs fast ARM processor with two 10 G base T ports. And maybe the best parts of the Switch are the fact that it sips power, it has a web management interface, and the price of the Switch brand new is about what you would pay for something like this used. We have a lot to go over here, so let's get to it. Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and this is the Microtik CRS 524XS 16XQRM. Guys, Microtik has heard you. This switch has just about everything that I think a small office would need and even a small data center installation. What's more is that you have all of the cool Microtik features, the promise of a few more, and at a price that is relatively reasonable. And let's start with the price because I'm saying it's reasonable, but other folks are gonna freak out over it. The current MSRP of the switch is $21.95. Fun fact, when we first did a article and Rohit did an article on the launch of this product, it was listed at $27.95. Usually Microtik MSRPs are higher than the street price. So we would actually expect it to be even like less than that. And so if you were to go onto eBay, there are of course many early 32 port 100 gigabit switch options that are super loud, they use a ton of power, and they can also be cheaper than $2,000. But for a lot of switches that are maybe 16 ports similar to this, and maybe you're using some newer hardware, don't use a ton of power, aren't super loud, all that kind of stuff, you're not gonna spend less than $2,200 even on a used switch. So at $2,200 for how much capacity you get in this, it's actually a pretty darn good deal. Now, of course, if you're that person that likes the $150 four port 10 gig Microtik special, more power to you. But once you need something a little bit more, I think that 100 gig is gonna take over for a lot of folks very soon. And this is a great platform to take advantage of that. Now, something that was really fun that happened recently was I was traveling to Los Angeles for the AMD Zen 5 event, Ryzen 9000 series launch and all that kind of stuff. And while I was in LA, somebody recognized me and said, hey, you're the Microtik Switch review guy. Are you gonna go and review that new 100 gig Switch? And I said, yeah, you know, Rohit is still reviewing it right now. I'll, I'll get back and once we know what the test results are, I'm gonna go and record that video. And so really he was interesting because I asked him like, you know, what are you so excited? Why are you so excited for the Switch other than the fact that it's a cheap 100 gig Switch? And he literally told me, he's like, look, that is exactly why I need this Switch. That guy runs like the actual studio, not just our YouTube studio, but like a big production studio. And he's like, hey, look, we have folks, but we rarely have more than maybe 12 or whatever folks working on projects locally, a lot of other folks may be far away. And so having a switch where you can get 10 or 12 people on plus some storage is absolutely perfect. You don't need more than that. And something we're starting to see is that on products like some of the Blackmagic design products, you're starting to see 100 gig networking built into some of the video products. My expectation is, you know, maybe Apple or somebody is going to start using that soon. But even if not, you have to remember that a 100 gig network connection is basically like a PCI Gen 5 M.2 SSD in terms of performance. It's 100 gig networking is not even like fast anymore. We already have looked at 400 gig cards on the STH main site and next year we're gonna have 800 gig. So let's be clear. If you're gonna be running a giant AI cluster, you're not gonna be using this switch. Instead, you're gonna be using a 51.2T 800 gigabit ethernet switch that we are gonna have a review of either before or after this. But you're gonna be using something like that for a big AI cluster. You're not gonna be using a switch like this. But for a lot of like edge use cases that want high performance, this thing is absolutely awesome. Now, before we get too far into this, I just wanna say thank you to Microtik for sending the switch so we could go and review it. We can say it's sponsored because of that. I also just wanna say a quick thank you to all the STH YouTube members who are supporting the site, allowing us to buy things like the optics and DACs and all that kind of stuff that we use and we're gonna show you a little bit of in this video. Again, if you can support us, that'd be awesome. You can join down below. Okay, so the first thing I just wanna point out is that this is a, is a pretty decent size one use switch. I mean, this is not a half width unit or it's definitely definitely a pretty deep switch for a Microtik switch. But on the other hand, it is also a pretty high performance switch for a Microtik switch. I will point out real quick that the switch did come with rack ears, but we don't have them installed right now because it just is easier to get inside when they're not installed. Okay, before we get inside though, let's talk about over here, there are a total of 16 QSFP28 ports. Now, a few important 
important things about this configuration. The first one is that you get 16 100 gigabit ethernet connections, but the Q in QSFP28 stands for quad. And the reason for that is that it's essentially four 25 gig links that are together to make a 100 gig link. And that practically means that you can split this out into four 25 gig ethernet connections. And a lot of folks don't know that these exist, but this is a good example where this is a QSFP28 on one end and you can put a SFP28 on the other end and go directly from 100 gig to 25 gig without having to use a, another kind of cable or anything like that. It's more efficient, of course, to use breakout cables, but at the same time, having little attachments like these can be a lifesaver if you need them. But what that means is that if you have 16 ports and you can break those out to 25 gig, now you have a total of 64 possible 25 gig ports just over here. And that is awesome because it allows you to go and mix and match different types of devices. Maybe you need a 100 gig to a workstation, some servers, some storage. Maybe on the other hand, you have a couple other things that you just need to attach with 25 gig and you wanna use that kind of like lower performance inner connect. Well, uh, you know, you can just use a breakout cable, easy peasy. Now, of course, if you wanna just use 100 gig, then there are a ton of relatively inexpensive options out there these days. It's not like the old days where you're spending like, you know, 1700 bucks or something like that for a short range optic. You can now get those on eBay for well under 100 bucks and sometimes a lot cheaper than that. The nice thing about Microtik switches is that these optics aren't coded for Microtik, they don't have to be. And so you can pretty much just plug almost whatever you want in there. So whether you wanna use MTP, MPO cable, Cables, or you want to use just like LC and you want to use like single mode fiber, like whatever the heck you want to go plug in, you can pretty much plug into this. Even if you want to use DAX, easy peasy. But on that subject of 25 gig ethernet, there are four additional 25 gig ethernet ports on the switch already. So if you do have some downstream devices that just don't need hundred gig connectivity and you just want some low cost, lower performance 25 gig, well, that's here too. Now, next to those 25 gig ethernet ports, we have a serial console port and then two 10G based T ports. These 10G based T ports connect to the management processor instead of going directly to the switch chip. So it's a slower path. And I just want to make sure everybody knows that these 10G based T ports are really for management because some people will look at this, see the 10G based T ports and be like, oh, I can go and, you know, get fast 10G based T as well. But that's not what you want to do because it doesn't go directly into the switch chip. So just want to point that out. They are fast, but that's the reason that they're number one fast, but you kind of don't want to use them for data traffic. But at the same time that I'm saying that, I do want to point out that inside this switch, there are two 25 gig links between the switch chip and the Annapurna Labs management processor. So it is the case where you have enough bandwidth to go from these 10 G based T ports through the management processor and to the switch chip. It's just, these are not directly like tied into the switch chip. So overall, they're going to be much lower performance. Okay, now taking a look at the back of the switch, you can see a couple of interesting features. Like for example, this whole back of the switch is almost removable. On one side, you have all of the fans and there are four fan modules that can be used and you can hot swap them, of course, if you need to service them. Fans are extremely reliable these days, but it is still possible that you will see one fail. And if they do, you can hot swap them. The other feature, however, is that there are two power supplies in the switch. Now, both of these power supplies are Microtik power supplies, but they're 150 watts. And the reason that that's so cool is because that is super low power for a 16 port, 100 gig ethernet switch. Now having two gives us redundancy, but you'll see in our power consumption section that this switch actually is very reasonable when it comes to overall power. 100 gig optics, of course, will use a lot of power just because they are higher power devices. But on the other hand, the overall switch itself is relatively good. And even though you see fans in the power supplies, you see fans in like the back of the switch and all kinds of stuff, this is not the loudest switch that we've reviewed by any means. And it is much quieter than the switches that we see that are like much higher, like, you know, like 32 port, 100 gig switch, stuff like that. This is much quieter than that. And inside the switch, we see something that's actually a little bit more complex than we see from the average Microtik switch. For example, there's a separate board just to go handle all of the hot swap fans. And that's something we don't normally see in a Microtik switch. 
The redundant power supplies are wired into the main switchboard and the main switchboard has not only the main switch chip, but it also has our optical cages and our management processor. And this is the same ARM processor that is used in some of Microtik's CCR lines, so their cloud router series. Now, if you didn't know this, Annapurna Labs was acquired years ago by AWS and Amazon said, hey, you guys are gonna go make a whole bunch of chips initially for the back end, but now that team is also in charge of things like making chips for AWS Nitro, also the Graviton line and all that kind of stuff all came from that acquisition. But this is kind of a way that you can get an AWS chip in a way into your Microtik router or switch. The big thing here though, is that it has like 25 gig, 10 gig interfaces and a fast processor. So this is not like your low end management processor that we see in a lot of kind of lower end Microtik switches, a lot of other switches out there. This is actually a pretty high performance management processor. And why that's so important is because we have a hundred gigabit switch. And so if you were to turn on almost any decent service, if you have a slow management processor, that thing's absolutely gonna crawl. So you do wanna have something that's a little bit faster. Although so if you only have two 25 gig connections to the management processor, of course, you're not gonna be running things at like 100 gig line rate through that management processor, right? Cause you just don't have enough performance to do that or enough bandwidth to do that. Now the switch chip itself is a Marvell 98CX8410. So this is not part of the Prestera line. This is a higher end line. And some of the folks on the STH site have found that this is also used in things like super micro blade chassis and stuff. So this is not a low end chip again. This is a pretty high and switch chip, especially for Microtik. While this heatsink might seem huge, it's really not that big compared to some of the other 100, 400 gig, 800 gig switches that we've looked at. Something else that's interesting that Microtik is doing here is that the switch PCB is kind of placed in the middle of this chassis because it looks like the QSFP cages, there's half of the QSFP 28 cages are above the PCB and half of them are below. It's pretty common in a lot of 1U switches that we see that kind of configuration. One really interesting thing that Microtik has here is a little retention bracket. I think what is for really is to keep the light guides that show like the status of those ports and keep those kind of safe. One thing that I noticed is I was able to go when I was working in this and knock off one of the 25 gig port light guides. So I think that might be the reason that they're over there. Although then I wonder why they didn't put them on the 25 gig side. But of course this is a Microtik switch. So we expect that it's decent performance, relatively low power and has good management. So let's get over to the other set to go take a look at that. Okay, so let's talk about the power consumption and noise of the switch. If you're hoping for a super low power and completely silent switch, this is not the right option. So the idle power consumption we saw was somewhere in that 47 watt range using two power supplies. Now you might be able to get a little bit lower with like a single power supply, also at a higher voltage. There, there are definitely options there, but call it about 47 watts. Now at idle, you might be able to hear this switch going while I'm speaking. It's somewhere in the 40, to 43 dBA range in our 34 dBA noise floor studio. Now the max power consumption for this switch is somewhere in that 150 watt range. So from about 47 watts up to about 150 watts. There are redundant power supplies. And I will say that the 150 watts feels like a lot. We definitely didn't get anywhere near there. I don't think we broached over 100 to 120 watts. Now, of course, that power consumption figure can vary based on the type of optics you're using and you know what you're using in terms of switch features. So I'm just gonna point out there that there's a pretty wide range on one hand, but on the other hand, you really are talking from about just under 50 watts to about 150 watts is kind of being your universe of power consumption. And I'll also just note that when you start the switch up and then also when you load it up with a whole bunch of high power optics and stuff, you sometimes see the overall noise creep up a bit. You don't really see it as much with DAX, but as you start to put a lot of optics in there, you will hear the fan noise kind of go up a bit. Overall, the fan noise, it's not too, too bad. It's just not something I would want sitting like directly next to my ear. I'd probably want it in an equipment closet or something like that. One other thing I wanna talk about though is the management for this system. Now, there are a number of options that you have to manage the switch and that's really nice, right? So for example, you have your kind of CLI and you can always use that. You can even get to it in some of the other interfaces through the terminal. But the other thing that you have is you have a web interface. That is super easy because it makes it easy to manage. If you ever need to get in there, you don't have to go learn commands. You you can just go on the web interface and go click stuff, right? Now, the third option is really Winbox, and that's what we're showing here. Winbox is a utility that you download and you run, and it offers pretty similar functionality really to the web user interface. 
things are point and click in a GUI and it makes life very easy. Now, one thing that is really nice is that if you don't have access to the default IP address, you can use Winbox to very easily locate and then connect to the switch via its MAC address. So that means that you don't need to go through any like setting up different networks and stuff like that. And that really, to me, is something that is an advantage for this type of switch. On one hand, you can plug it in and it'll just work kind of as an unmanaged switch. But on the other hand, if you want to go access some more of the features, which I think a lot of people will with 100 gig switches, well, you can get to that via a GUI and easy applications, whether that's a web interface or the Winbox. Now the switch here that we're using is the Marvell 98CX8410, I think. And you can see that Microtech has already started to take some of those layer three offload settings and start enabling those in the current firmware. To me though, this is the area where Microtech really needs to do some work. And the reason for that is pretty simple. This is kind of a newer class of switch chip that it's not like one that they like the Prestera line that they've used everywhere, right? This is kind of a higher end one. We have 100 gig networking. And just to me, once you get to 100 gig networking, um, you have something that is crazy fast per port. Again, giving you some idea, the 100 gig network port on there, you'd need like at least I don't know, four PCIe Gen 3 NVMe SSDs, maybe maybe two of the PCIe Gen 4 NVMe SSDs to have enough bandwidth to just be a single one of these 100 gig ports. Of course, that's a little bit rough, but the idea is just think of how much processing power it just takes to move all of that data. And so you really don't want things going to the CPU. You really want to have as much as you can offload it onto the switch chip itself. Now, of course, Microtech says that their engineers are working on doing more hardware offloading, and that is great. But on the other hand, we can't really judge the new features that aren't in the current release builds of the firmware because we don't have access to them yet. But on the flip side, I think that there are going to be a lot of folks that do some pretty simple setups on here and get decent performance out of the switch and can do that using these just GUI management interfaces and just have a really easy time. They don't have to learn, you know, whatever CLI is on some eBay switch. You just kind of click things. And speaking of the performance, we were able to go and push a lot of traffic through this just using simple iPerf. We'll also show you some of the performance that Microtik has. With that, let's get to our key lessons learned. Okay, so what did we learn from the switch and like, who is this really for? I keep going back to that gentleman that I met in Los Angeles that was telling me like, hey, this is perfect for a lot of the new generation of video production gear that has 100 gig networking built in. You know, frankly, 100 gig NICs are coming down in price to the point that, you know, they are relatively affordable. And as we move into PCIe Gen 5 and PCIe Gen 6, I think we're gonna see a lot more 100 gig networking because it'll be a couple of generations old, but it also no longer will re require that you have like a PCIe by 16 slot and that makes it a lot easier to integrate into a lot more platforms. Now, if you have a relatively small installation, you want features like having a GUI and all that kind of stuff, I think that this is an absolutely killer switch. You have a lot of processing power, you have a new switch chip, and Microtik is saying that, hey, we're gonna go and work on more layer three offloads, so I think that this switch might even get better over time. And the pricing at 2195 list price, not even what you know, a street price, which is usually a bit lower than that, is I mean, that, that's a really good price for a switch with this much capability. Now I know a lot of folks are still gonna be hung up on that price and say, hey, I can get a 32 port switch cheaper than that. Sure, I'm gonna use a lot more power. And like, yeah, you're gonna use more power. It's gonna be a lot louder. And that is maybe why this thing is so useful. It's something that you can use in an equipment closet, in a studio, in a small medium business Business, a small cluster, right? If you have a new cluster, you have a rack, a lot of new racks will not need more than 1600 gig ports just because if you have a low power rack, you can't put that many servers in there anymore. I also really like the fact that Microtik is using pretty high end switch chips and management processors. I mean, you have a management processor that's an ARM processor, high performance, that's basically from AWS. You have a Marvell switch chip and Marvell is a switch vendor that goes all the way up to the 51 1.2 terabit per second switches, right? And sells into like hyperscale data centers. I just think what this means for Microtik's future is really good. But hey, I'd love to hear how you would use a switch like this. And if you think this is a good thing, what you'd like to see Microtik do in the future, if you did like this video, well, of course, share it with your friends, but also give it a like, click subscribe and turn on notifications. As always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.